Overview. Good afternoon, everyone. The chapter we're going to learn today is femoral intertrochanteric fracture, also called intertrochanteric fracture. We'll first introduce the anatomical features of this site. The femoral trochanter is divided into the superlateral greater trochanter and the lower medial lexar trochanter. The intertrochanter is a cancellous bone. The junction between the femoral neck and the femoral shaft bears huge shear force, so it is easy to fracture when it is hit by external forces. If it is not treated in time, it is easy to cause costal varal malunion. The causal femoral and the lesser trochanter are important parts to bear the shear force. Whether the causal femoral is intact determines whether the fracture is stable. Most of these fractures are unstable. The femoral trochanter is a cancellous bone with rich blood supply, so the fracture is easy to heal. Injury mechanism. Such fractures are mostly caused by indirect forces, which is common in the aged people. Fractures by indirect force are mostly osteoporotic fractures. Due to sudden torsion of the lower limbs or strong torsion force when falling, the trochanter is broken by force. The fracture of the aged people are mostly communicated due to local bone fragility. Fractures by direct impact force are mostly caused by local direct blow and impact forces, which is more common in young people. Such fractures are mostly caused by the high energy injuries of direct force and sciatic nerve injury can occur occasionally. This type of fracture accounts for 3.4% of adult fractures. Bone cystic lesions and pathological fractures are prone to occur in femoral intertrochanter. Clinical manifestations. After injury, severe pain and swelling are felt around the hip. The hip joint and knee joint of the affected side cannot move and the patient cannot stand and walk. Physical examination. The greater trochanter is swollen and subcutaneous blood stasis and echymosis are seen around the hip. The injured limb is shorter than the affected limb. The distal limb, that is the distal fracture section, is in extreme extortion position. In severe cases, extortion can reach 90 degrees. Present pain is palpable below the inguinal midpoint and at the vertex of the greater trochanter. The sensation of bone rubbing can be palpable at the broken ends. The femoral conduction sound disappears. Both active and passive activities of the hip joint disappear. The active activity of the knee joint disappears and the passive activity exists. The limb is shorter than the lower limb on the healthy side. The circumference of the root of the affected thigh is larger than that of the healthy side. If accompanied by sciatic nerve injury, there will be foot droop and sensory disturbances on the lateral cruise and in the instep. Auxiliary examination. We usually need to make a definitive diagnosis of femoral intertrochanteric fractures by pelvic radiograph. However, the bone structures are easy to overlap or block each other due to the complex hip bone structures. It is necessary to take a three-dimensional reconstruction CT of both hip joints to understand the specific type of fracture. If it is considered as a pathological fracture of the proximal femoral, it is required to take the MRI of both hip joints to understand the lesion's focus. Such fractures are more common in aged people and many patients are accompanied by basic diseases such as diabetes, hypertension and heart diseases. It is necessary to accurately assess the organ function before surgery and control the basic diseases to reduce the risk of surgery. Classification. The classification commonly used in clinical practice 
for intertrochanteric fractures, it's called EVANS, advanced classification, including five types in total. Type 1, the fracture does not completely through the trochanter or the trochanter is completely fractured. But the fracture is not displaced and the causa femoral and the lesser trochanter are intact, which is a stable fracture accounting for 11.1% of intertrochanteric fractures. Type 2, it is the femoral intertrochanteric fractures with minor fracture of lesser trochanter and the fracture line does not affect the stability of causa femoral and lesser trochanter, which is also a stable fracture accounting for 17.4% of intertrochanteric fractures. Type 3, it is the intertrochanteric fracture with comminuted fracture of lesser trochanter, which is an unstable fracture because the fracture line has affected the bearing capacity of the casa femoral and the lesser trochanter. Accounting for 45.1% of intertrochanteric fractures. Type 4. It is the intertrochanteric fractures with comminuted fracture of greater and lesser trochanters, which is also an unstable fracture, accounting for 20.1% of intertrochanteric fractures. Type 5. It is the reverse obliquity intratrochanteric fractures, which is an unstable fracture accounting for 6.3% of intertrochanteric fractures. These types cannot only summarize the types of intratrochanteric fractures, but also can decide the treatment program according to the stability of the fracture. Treatment, non-surgical treatment. If the patient cannot tolerate the surgery due to physical conditions, tibial tuberosity traction or femoral supracondylar traction can be applied. The traction weight is 1 over 7 to 1 over 11 of the body weight. DR shall be re-examined bedside during the traction to understand whether there is any excessive traction that causes the separation of the fracture end and understand the situation of fracture healing. If the fracture heals thermally, the patients can work with crutches after 12 weeks. Of course, long-term bed rest is likely to cause bed complications with high mortality. So the intertrochanteric fracture is also called the last fracture for the aged people. Based on literature reports, the mortality of femoral intertrochanteric fractures is extremely high. 50% of the aged people would die within one year after surgical treatment, but 30% of the aged people with conservative treatment would die within one year. Although the mortality of surgery is high, the mortality is higher without surgery. Therefore, it is advocated to perform surgery as soon as possible if the physical condition permits. If the patient is unable to undergo surgery and needs conservative treatment, long-time bed rest can easily lead to hypostatic pneumonia, bed sores, deep venous thrombosis of the lower limbs, muscle atrophy, achylosis, disused osteoporosis, dyspepsia, electrolyte disturbance, urinary tract infections, etc. We shall teach patients and their families how to avoid these complications. Hypostatic pneumonia. Turn the patient over and pat the back every day. Teach the patient to cough because the cough can help sputum excretion. Teach the patients to do deep breathing exercises in multiple sets to maintain breathing function and even practice balloon blowing. Bed cells. Put aside the compressed parts of the patient daily, including the sacrochygic region, scapula, and heel. If there is poor blood supply or skin damage in the above regions, timely medical intervention shall be performed. Deep venous thrombosis of the lower limbs, muscle atrophy, and achylosis. Teach patients to perform ankle pump. 
exercise daily to practice muscle contraction, which can accelerate the circulation of blood and lymph in the affected limb, prevent the deep venous thrombosis of the lower limb, and also promote the tummy sense, and also prevent muscle atrophy and synatrophysis, and also need to take functional exercises on the healthy limbs to prevent thrombosis, muscle atrophy, and ankylosis. Dyspepsia and the electrolyte disturbance. Due to reduced limb activity after bed rest, the digestive function is weakened, resulting in reduced peristalsis, difficulty in defecating, and less food intake. So patients shall be taught to rub around the nerve clockwise. Have a reasonable diet. Eat more vegetables, fruits, and other cellulosic food, as well as reasonable amounts of protein, salt, and meat. Urinary tract infection. Drink more water and urinate more to prevent urinary tract infection. Drinking more water can also dilute sputum. Surgical treatment. The purpose of surgical treatment is to provide the hip a strong internal physician, which can enable the patient to move early and avoid complications caused by long-time bed rest. The anatomical reduction Restoration of continuity of casa femoral and correction of causa vara deformity shall be done as far as possible. Proximal femoral nail anti-rotation, gamma nail dynamic hip screw ATC can be used for fixation. The current mainstream method is the proximal femoral nail anti-rotation. Because such method is more minimally invasive with less bleeding, faster operation time, less impact on the patient, and simple operation. It usually takes half an hour to an hour to complete this surgery, with a bleeding of about 50 mil and an incision of about 7 cm, which is very suitable physician for both the aged people and the young people. Of course, we cannot forget that most of these fractures are osteoporotic fractures in the aged people. If the fracture is cured but the osteoporosis is not treated, the aged people may suffer from the next osteoporosis fracture when encountering the next trauma. Therefore, we shall conduct a systematic anti-osteoporosis treatment, including a high calcium diet, reasonable exercise, dynamic monitoring of bone mineral density and reasonable use of anti-osteoporosis drug treatment so as to allow more reasonable treatment of femoral intertrochanteric fractures. That's all for today's class. Thank you for listening. Homework. Review the femoral neck fractures mentioned earlier. What are the same as and differences from the intertrochanteric fractures? Class is over.